Yes, good morning once again. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, the video was interrupted. Uh, I'm back again. I apologize for that uh, um, short interruption. Um, I discovered that uh, my device was not properly positioned. Good morning, Aye Acharu. Thank you for joining me. Wow, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, to see your face on this um, broadcast today. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you for uh, taking your time to be with me this morning. I kindly just uh, click the share button, press the share button under the video and um, share it public and invite uh, your friends um, to join me today. Uh, today I am here again on the broadcast and um, the topic I, I'll be discussing today is um, related, still related to worship and um, some of the activities that uh, we do in church. Um, first of all, I want to say that whatever I am doing and um, the aim and the focus of my live broadcast is not to attack personalities. It is not to attack individuals. It is not to attack denominations. It is not to attack churches, but to speak the truth. I, I have a lot of respect for men of God, because I am one also, but um, I discover that um, we have a responsibility to speak on certain issues and um, enlighten ourselves. Thank you for joining me, Ma, Sister Chinwe Ananava. God bless you. I'm happy to see you and the broadcast with me this morning. I feel honored. Um, just uh, press the share button and also help me share the button. How are you doing in uh, UK? Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the like. Yes, thank you. So, um, as the topic is, are you resisting or assisting? Are you resisting or assisting? The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. James, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then, this is one apostle talking here, Apostle James. Then we have another apostle also talking from the New Testament. They are all both New Testament uh, ministers and uh, men of God. Apostle Peter also said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Then verse 9 he says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Hallelujah. Now, this is 
is um, uh, very, very profound. Two different sets of people, two different apostles, two different men of God have spoken on this particular issue. And what they said is similar. James said, what we are to do as children of God is to resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Thank you, Justin Mayo, for joining me this morning. How are you today? And how is Germany? Wow. Nice to see you on this uh, broadcast with me this morning. Uh, kindly help me press on the share button and share the video public. So James said, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Apostle Peter said the same thing. That even though the devil is walking about like a roaring lion, roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, what you should do is to resist him steadfastly in the faith. So why I title this message, are, we, are, are you resisting the devil or you are assisting him? Because one of the things that uh, some, some people in the body of Christ have done today is to actually help people to assist the devil by our actions, by our beliefs, we have been assisting the devil. We have been assisting the devil. A lot of people have been assisting the devil for the fact that they believe certain things and pray in certain ways. They are assisting the devil instead of resisting the devil. They are assisting the devil. If you are submitted to God, if you are a child of God, if you have brought your life in submission to God, the only thing that you are expected to do to the devil is to resist him. But if you fail to resist him and you believe otherwise, you will be assisting the devil. I am going to be, I, I, will, I, will, I will take some little time to explain uh, how this thing works. Faith is a universal principle. Faith is actually the tool that you can use to resist the devil or assist him. You can resist the devil by your faith. You can assist the devil by your faith. How do you resist the devil by your faith? And how do you assist the devil by your faith? We are, you can assist the devil by your faith. One, by elevating and promoting the experience of people with the devil above the word of God without background check. When somebody comes and shares uh, his testimony and tells you, oh, in my family, Satan did this and Satan did that and Satan hindered me and the devil did this and the devil did that and you begin to elevate that person's experience. That experience may be maybe one out of 10, one out of 20, one out of 50. And you begin to elevate that particular experience. You place it above the word of God. You place it above the truth. What you are simply doing is you are assisting the devil because one, you have believed more in what he can do. You have believed, you have allowed that experience to be the, the basis for your faith. That has given you more faith in the devil and in what he can do. And this is what is obtainable today in many churches. What is simply being done 
is assisting the devil in faith. Assisting the devil in faith. In faith of what? Of their personal experiences. In faith of what they, what they have encountered in their personal lives. Without any background checkup, people will not bother to know, to find out what is the background of this person. Where is it coming from? What are the things, uh, in what way has he involved himself with the devil in the past that is making him to have this kind of experience? And then, when, this, when that experience is now generalized, when on the basis of that, you come to the altar, and you tell people, because of that person's one single experience, that everybody should place his hand on his head, or on his stomach, or whatever, on one, one part of the body, and repeat a prayer, that a prayer as a result of one or two persons, people's experience. What that ha has successfully done is, it leaves something in the mind of these people, of the other people who may not have had the same experience with this particular one. And the more we keep doing that, the more we incapacitate the believers, the more we paralyze their, their faith, and the more also we, we make the word of God ineffective the more we make the gospel important. Sometimes, people do these things without question. I have, I have said it. I have done it in the past, but I did it in ignorance. And now my eyes are open. I have a responsibility to speak. God knows my heart. I am not saying this to run down a church. I am not saying this to run down a denomination. I feel pain in my heart when I see People with great destiny, great potentials, who should be great and mighty deliverers, deliverers in the land, they are still looking for deliverance. Then who is going to deliver the land? Who is going to deliver the nation? Who is going to redeem the land? That is a problem. And that is why I'm coming on this broadcast to address some of these issues. So the question is, are you resisting or assisting? Are you resisting the devil or you are assisting him? The Bible says we should resist the devil. We should resist the devil. That is all you are expected to do. You are not expected to negotiate with him. You are expected to resist him. And how do you resist him? You resist him in faith. That is maintaining constant faith on what God has done. Maintaining positive faith on what Christ has done. Maintaining that faith. Staying in that faith, not giving in, not giving out, not giving up. That is how you resist the devil. But by the time you take one person's experience and elevate it and generalize it, you have assisted the devil. And that is what we are doing ignorantly. We are assisting the devil. And by so doing, we, we elevate him and keep more people in bondage. So, so that, such that those who are supposed to deliver the land, those who are supposed to be deliverers, those who are supposed to go and take different spheres of influence and do explain. Okay, let me give you an example. For example, if you have somebody, for example, who is uh, who maybe is an inventor that has the capacity to come up with invention, maybe in the medical field or in the engineering field. Maybe in his uh, 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 sphere of influence. When that person finds himself in this kind of atmosphere where one person's experience is being generalized and everybody is, is being made to pray that kind of prayer, even if that person has, doesn't have problem, even if he is free, by the time he keeps doing that over time, it will be registered in his subconscious that something is wrong with him. And for as long as he believes that something is wrong with him, he will not go and pursue that his destiny. He will not go and pursue that his purpose. He will not go and pursue that his, that his calling. And that is a problem. That is a problem. Oh, yes. 
Yes, you are right, Sister Chingwe. God bless you. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Yes, it works in the positive and in the negative direction. The more of the more you hear, the more you believe in what you hear. So if what you keep hearing is of that negative side, then you are having faith to assist the devil. That is the truth. That is the truth. So, number two, how you can assist the devil is by focusing more on what the devil is doing than what God says. When you begin to focus more on what the devil is doing, when you begin to focus on what the devil is doing, you focus on it more, you emphasize on it more. I, I, I don't see, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I, yes, I agree that people, some people need, there are people who need deliverance. There is no doubt about it. There are people who need deliverance. But why should the case of one individual become a reason to generalize the prayer, to make everybody to have to pray that prayer? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That kind of message. Only it capacitates the church. It makes the church important. It renders the church important. We need to do something to correct this. People's destiny are at stake. Somebody's destiny is at stake. And we need to speak out for the love of God and the love of the body of Christ. If we don't do that, the implication is that those who respect, those who do these things, whether they do it in ignorance or they do it deliberately because they have respect, to, respect for them and because they, have, they, have, they are submitted to them, they will also go and begin to repeat the same thing in their churches or in their places of worship. Yes. You are right, Sister Chinwe. Deliverance is acquired through knowledge and renewing your mind. That is the truth. That is the truth. Actually, the, 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 the righteous, the deliverance of the righteous comes through knowledge. Yes, that's what, the, that's what the Bible says. Through knowledge shall the righteous be delivered. The, the greatest tool for the deliverance of the righteous is knowledge. You shall know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It is not even prayers as such that delivers the righteous. It is knowledge. 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 Knowledge is powerful enough to deliver the righteous. Knowledge is strong enough. Knowledge is potent enough. The knowledge of the truth is potent. So what we should be teaching in churches today, we should spend more time teaching, imparting knowledge to people than emphasizing on people's experience, on individual people's experience, or than in focusing on what the devil is doing. Yes. So that is one of the, the second way that people assist the devil. The third way, the third point is by affirming that something is after you. Oh, after your ancestors or following you from your father's house or from your mother's house, the more you affirm that in prayers, the more you say it, the more it comes out of your mouth. What you have, what you have done is you have successfully nullified your freedom. You have lost your freedom. You have given access to the devil. Because as you say it, he hears you. When you, are, when you are praying amiss, the devil knows. When you are praying in faith, he also knows. So you can see that faith, faith 
as powerful as faith is, as powerful, yes, stop, yes, you are right, uh, Paul, Paul, Oga. Stop focusing on what the devil is doing. Yes, focus on what God is doing. Focus on the word of God. Focus on what God is, what God is saying. Yes, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. So, so long as you keep affirming these things, and the scriptures cannot be broken, Satan himself knows these principles that you are ensnared by your words. Proverbs chapter 6. By your words you are ensnared. And even in the New Testament, by your words you will be justified. So by your words you will be ensnared. So when people say those things, even if you are saying it in prayer, everything that is fighting me, you place your hand on your head, you place your hand on your chest, whatever is following me from my father's house, from my mother's house, whoever is after me, the more you say that, the more you affirm that, the more you are assisting the devil, my friend. The more you are assisting the devil. And what, what the only thing that kind of, a, that kind of a, 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 a gospel or that kind of a thing does is that it, it keeps people, it, it makes people to keep coming. To keep coming to, um, coming to the church or coming to that particular place. And then as long, for as long as they keep coming, they keep trooping there, they keep, because they believe that something is always wrong with them. From January to December, the next, the following year, it continues again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's sit down and think for a while. I believe there are those who genuinely come with some issues, with some cases. But why should that be a general case? Why should you generalize? Why should you? People, those, even those who have been made, who have been delivered, even pastors, they, they pray those prayers. They repeat those prayers. It's high time we stop assisting the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil. And how do you resist him? Resist him in your faith. Faith in what God has done. Faith in the fact that you are free. Stand therefore in the liberty where with Christ has made you free. Stand in it. Resist him steadfastly. Yes, that is what Apostle James and Apostle um, uh, Peter is also saying. Even Paul said something similar. That give no room to Satan. So you can see at the matter of three witnesses, a matter is established. Apostle Peter said it. Apostle James said it. Apostle Paul said it. And then because you, you respect maybe a man of God or a particular church or your denomination and you decide to elevate that practice above the scripture above the word of God come on friends it's high time we, we, we question these things they are not scriptural that prayer is not scriptural it is not scriptural to, 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 to make children of God to subject children of God to that kind of a thing it, it, it is in fact what it does is it, 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 it does more of uh, it, it, it makes more slaves out of people that is the truth about it it most slaves out of people. I am saying this from the depth of my heart for the love of God and the love of the church. In ignorance, I did it in the past. But God has opened my eyes to see the truth. I have a responsibility not to keep quiet, but to also say the truth so that other children of God can be free. Yes. Thank you for joining me this morning. Paul Oga, I appreciate you. Um, yes, yes. Paul Oga said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear opens the door for Satan. Yes, yes. Fear opens the door
I'm so sorry for the pause in the broadcast. Uh, is due to network. The other network um, service providers I was using just got interrupted, so I have to switch over to another network. This is one of the challenges we are having uh, in this nation today. About this, unfortunately, people who are supposed to resolve these problems are busy still looking for deliverance in the church. They are still trying to be delivered. Even though they have been free, they are, they, are, they are free in their spirit, but in their minds, they have been enslaved. Just like um, uh, Sister Chinwe is saying here, that strongholds, imaginations, thoughts, are what is holding us back because of wrong teachings. Yes, because of wrong teachings. Because of wrong teachings. And we have a, we have a responsibility to speak. I can't keep quiet. I can't keep quiet for the love of God and the love of the church, the, 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 the body of Christ, the body of Christ at large and the, the, the body of Christ in this nation, we have to speak. It does not matter um, uh, those who are, uh, are, promoting, are promoting it. Uh, I, I want to believe that. I want to believe that. Probably they also don't know. Because we, we cannot, there's no man of God that knows everything. We know in part and we speak in part. So I, I, I also believe that um, a day is coming or a time will come that uh, they will also get to know this. And some of these practices uh, will stop. Thank you for joining me, uh, Ola Martin. Ola Martin uh, from um, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm trying to think it should be Georgia. Thank you for joining me, Ola Martins. I'm so um, blessed today and I'm privileged to have you join me on this uh, uh, broadcast. Just uh, do me a favor and then uh, click on that share button and um, share the video. Let's uh, let uh, this message uh, be, be spread and uh, let people uh, get to know the, the truth. Um, I appreciate you, Paul Oga. Uh, I think uh, you are watching from Benin City, right? You are watching from Benin City? Yes, thank you, Sister Chinwe. Okay, that's good. Sister Chinwe is saying she enjoyed the broadcast. Yes. Um, we will be having more of this um, by the grace of God. So, uh, help me share the video. Yes, help me share the video. Press that share button and, sh and share. And let this video go viral so that the people, the children of God can be free. Yes, the deliverers in the land who are still tied in, 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 in Zion, they, they, they need to be released. They need to get out of Zion. They need to go out and set the land free. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I hope to, to come again on this broadcast by next week. God willing, um, remain blessed. My name is Pastor Edwin. Um, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.